People have been asking for it, waiting for it. When is Auburn going to have an announcement for their newest apparel deal? Would there be a change at all? Well, we finally got those answers this week. Auburn and Under Armour will be no more in 2025. Auburn and Nike is the future. And we got an expert here to talk about it. So let's jump into it right here and right now. War Eagle Auburn family and War Eagle and a special welcome to our E2C network family. Thank you so much for joining us, whether you are watching live or on the replay, however you got here, whenever you got here, we appreciate you being part of our little family within the Auburn family. We have a special topic that we want to discuss today, one that I think a certain individual has been preparing for per since he was born, apparently. <laughs> I don't know. I could be wrong. But this feels like the Super Bowl of sorts. We are finally no longer speculating. We are finally talking about facts, the future, what is coming, and the future, it is. Just do it. Auburn and Nike, you know when we talk apparel for Auburn, we are talking to one individual right here on the screen with me right now, Mr. Clint Richardson of the Auburn Uniform Database. What is going on, sir? I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> I want to take a nap. <laughs> hey, you knew this was coming more than anybody else. So you should, you had what your whole <clears throat> life to prepare for this moment. <laughs> you think you'd be ready for it, <clears throat> oh, man. Um, no, I, I didn't really have a real lead time. I just started prepping a couple, about a month ago, mm -hmm. just putting something on paper just to have something ready. And, and thank, thankfully it paid off. <laughs> thankfully they announced it early yesterday and not when i was in meetings all afternoon so it worked out just about as good as it could at that point i wonder if someone was looking out for you or something that knew <laughs> that this would be a very important thing for you to be on top of and said you know maybe there's a connection out there to to your, your work meetings and bosses it wouldn't surprise me in the least you, you know I mean, what you say that um and i this is just entirely conjecture but there have been many moments where news has broken while i am not at my computer and it's it's beyond just auburn and it's it's you know i've got friends who do this for their respective schools and you know we joked just the other day that every single one of us has had uniform related news break while we are traveling uh i think last during the football season uh the orange face mask being worn at Texas a and m was announced at like 502 as i am on my commute home and I had to pull off the interstate to cover that. So, yeah, it, it happens a lot. <laughs> See, this is what happens for content creators, folks. When stuff breaks, no matter where we are, we, we well, for most cases, we have to stop what we're doing and actually try to, you know, respond or, or be prepared for something. But look, no matter whether you were prepared for it or not, you knew this day was coming. If we kind of read the tea leaves, we knew that, we were getting close to that time period. Yeah. Um, I guess where I want to start with, uh, with you, because we just want to talk about what we know about what everybody needs to know about this deal and what we might know and things like that. And then we'll move into more of a Q and a time, but you guys can start dropping in comments now that you might want us to address. What do you feel like in terms of, was this, a little bit earlier than you thought it would be announced? Did you think it was going to be more so summer, like true summer? No, I 100% I thought this would happen Q1. So we're just a little later than I expected. Um, just because of the lead time, you know, it, it takes so long to get everything in line to get ready for the season. You know, you've got to have every single team ready, new uniforms ordered, all the sizing correct, all the numbering correct, all the design work already done. I mean, if you look at what equipment teams do, they're ordering almost two and a half to three years in advance. So <clears throat> we are very, very close to the window that in order to have anything ready on day one, 2025, they had to order now. Yeah. And they might have ordered three weeks ago. We don't, I don't know what happened, um, but <clears throat> it, it's a very tight timeline and we are in that moment right now so i feel yeah. for this equipment staff and what they're having to deal with in this transition because it's 
you know, it's a busy time for me just trying to cover it, but they are the ones who actually had to put all the work into it. So it's a very busy time for those guys. And yeah, I, I mean, like I said, I, I really expected this and I had been saying since the beginning that I thought we would get an answer, you know, Q4 2023 or Q1 2024. And we're just two weeks into Q2. So again, just it's tight and it's still a little later than I thought it would be. And I don't know if it was just crossing eyes, dotting T's, you know, whatever it was, right. but it was a, a tight, tight finish right here. Well, before we reiterate the facts of what, what we do know about this deal and stuff right now, let me, let me ask you in that same vein, when do you think the deal was made? I know you don't know, but we can maybe make an educated guess. And if I can give you a parameter, we know that the Under Armour president or owner, what I don't know what title I would give him made an appearance in fall practice, I believe. Do you remember that? Or I have that timeline correct in my head? Yeah, Kevin Plank, founder, former CEO, now back to CEO. You wonder why their stocks has dropped again. Um, he He's made multiple trips back to the Plains over the last year just to try to salvage this relationship. And, you know, I we can just assume that the contract was, you know, agreed to in principle a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. Um, I... I just don't have that information. And even when I get my hands on the contract itself, it might be signed today's date. It might yeah. be signed July 1st. Like we, we just won't know. And it's, yeah. it's just the world that we aren't privy to. And, mm-hmm. and it's, that's where you get all these, you know, crazy beliefs of what's going on behind the scenes. Like there, there's a whole <laughs> world that people just don't understand. And, and, and we don't have eyeballs on. Well, that's what you're here for is to help bring it to light as much as you can, what you can conjecture and what you can try to uh, dig out of all the nuance that may be out there. No matter when it happened, how it happened, the reality is I think we all saw the writing on the wall that this was going to be a change. And let me remind folks, this is an 18-year relationship with Under Armour. I'll be honest with you. When I saw that figure in the headline release I got from the athletic department, my head, I did a double take because to me, it feels like just yesterday because that's the world that I grew up in Auburn and under armor. And I know that a lot of you remember that most of you will still remember the Russell days, but most of you, that's all you or That's the, that's your nostalgia. So I know that there's a lot of opinions, a lot of, uh, thoughts about whether this is the right move, the wrong move. I think the prevailing is, is one of positivity uh, for the, for the most part, but what are the details, Clint? If you could just lay out exactly what we know from that press release or what you remember off the top of your head, I can obviously fill in the gaps too. The only thing that has been confirmed is that it is a 10 year deal beginning on July 1st, 2025. So you will not see anything Auburn and Nike related until that day. I've had a lot of questions about this over the last 24 hours, you know, 30 hours or whatever. Um, <clears throat> it's spent a big celebration, a big marketing campaign push for that day. You know, when when Pitt did this, a lot of teams do this, that they have a big celebration, a big block party, um, show off some uniforms, whether they're what's going to be worn on the field or the court later that year or not. But that july 1st is a big big deal when it comes to celebrating that transition and actually officially beginning this new relationship so again that's july 1st 2025 so i there was another comment in the questions about you know when does that transition happen is it going to be after the basketball season it's going to be after everything's over Mm -hmm. it the the current under armor contract like most of these deals throughout sports go will run through june 30th 2025 july 1st is a new season a new and, and a new era do you think uh, again i know we're moving on to nike but just trying to put all the pieces of this story and puzzle together 
I can see one instance where Under Armour kind of starts pulling back. I mean, they've already, you know, met their obligations, giving out the uniforms and stuff like that, and Auburn as well. But do you think there will be, I don't want to say a celebration, but an, an acknowledgement of these, this 18-year relationship of Auburn being one of those few schools that stood uh, stepped out with this company? Do you, do you think we might have anything like that? No, I think it'll be really interesting to see if we do. I just don't, that's just not how these things usually work. Like, yeah. you know, you're, it's asking a lot for both of these companies to, to, to spend the next year together. Uh, I mean, imagine breaking up with your, your boyfriend or girlfriend and spit and spending the next year living in the same house with them. Like that's yep. kind of what we've got. We've got a year long, it's, lame, year. it's a lame duck situation right now. And, you know, Under Armour has obligations to provide all the apparel and uniforms and accessories that the teams have already purchased for this upcoming season. Those usually don't get in until over the summer towards the fall. So, you know, there's, there is still a lot left to be done. Don't think that nothing's going to be done between Auburn and Under Armour going forward. And they're not just letting bygones be bygones and walking away from it right now this second because there is still work to be done there is still a legal contract in place until that day so everything that you've seen so far you know it was last september that auburn was no longer held by the exclusive bargaining agreement or whatever it was with under armor and they were legally allowed to go speak with other companies auburn announcing this today is still within those rights of the contract but there's still 16 months left that yeah. have to be fulfilled and it's it's going to be a long 16 months for everybody it's gonna be a little you could say it's an awkward year uh where we all know we're breaking up but we just got to get all our ducks in a row and, and things yeah. of that nature i guess in my little just wanting everybody to be kumbaya i would love to see a, a, a video of sorts of them like you know rewinding the tape and going back to click clack when this was first announced and then just kind of like having <laughs> A little celebration of that, showing the national championship game, all that kind of stuff. I mean, I, I agree, and I think that could be a fun. I mean, if anybody wants to make a video for the Auburn Uniform Database, I'm down to celebrate it on our end. But it, it's you're just not going to see that. That's yeah. just not how this works. That's not how corporate America works. That's not how this industry works. And it's it is a bummer because there has been such a a, a rich history between these two right now, and it's a shame that it's soured as much as it has. Um, I think if you see Under Armour in about the same place that they were in 2015, maybe even 2016 today, this isn't a conversation we're having, but it's, it, it's a real shame to see what Under Armour has spiraled into in the last seven, eight years. And you had hope that they uh, might be at least surviving a little bit by retaining Notre Dame. But when you peel that back a little bit, Notre Dame is a school that loves to differentiate themselves. And so why wouldn't they go with something, even if it's quote unquote, I want to call it a dying brand, but a brand that's not holding as strong as it used to be. It still gives them that different flavor out there. And I think that's what was valuable about Auburn coming into um, Under Armour. It gave you a differentiating factor, but Auburn's a much different place than it, um, was when that yeah that brand alignment began here we are now with this nike well, and, uh, and also sitting. remember that this is a business decision mm-hmm. and the 2015 deal with auburn and under Armour was not a great business move in many ways but in part because auburn agreed to accept 10 million dollars in stock payments at the high point of under armor's stock trading and if you look at the numbers back in 2015, when Auburn signed this deal, they Under Armour stocks were trading at about $54, $55 a piece. Just this week, they are under $7 a piece. That is almost $8.5 million of value that has been lost mm-hmm. over the last almost 10 years. Yeah, And it's insane. Mm-hmm. And, and now we don't know if Auburn still has all that, if they were allowed to sell them or recoup anything like we don't have those details but point still stands in less than 10 years it had lost almost 90 percent of its value yeah we're kind of moving into a part of the conversation i I wanted us to head here (laughs) about why this happened what like what what's the reasoning behind the decision now we're not going to know every single thing but again we can make some probably educated 
assumptions about what's the reasons behind a switch like this. And, and just maybe a similar comment and question here we have from Auburn Elvis with, with Notre Dame being private, do we know their deal with uh, Under Armour? And yes. probably not. Do you, you do know it? Yes. Oh, it's is... about $10 million a year, if not more. Okay. So there you go. So where would Auburn have been in that? In, at the 2015 okay. signing, Auburn was number two at about okay. 7.8 million a year. Okay. And within a month, Wisconsin signed, and they were slightly above, which bumped Auburn back down to number three. Yeah. Uh, when Under Armour re-signed last year, I think it was, I think it was 10 million a year for nine years or for 10 years or something like that. I don't recall all the details of that deal, but yes, it is public information. What, what that deal is. This is why I come to you for this information. Cause I don't know where to look for it. And <laughs> you have done the legwork to do it. So let, let's answer the question as best we can. Why Nike? What is the, we, the change about why we're changing. We can talk about as well in this, if you need to, but, but why Nike, why did Auburn and Nike decide to team up? There are a lot of reasons and, you know, it might be worth ranking those one day, but Ooh. as an outsider that doesn't really know how those conversations went, I can, I can give you a handful. It's, you know, the, the perspective of the company under armor is all but a dying brand right now. And it's a sh total shame, but again, you can't lose 90% of your value in 10 years and expect to be well regarded. Um, Nike has 50 plus years of excellence behind their belt. So you've got rivals, yes, but on two completely different spectrums right now. And, you know, you've got the recognition of the swoosh. You've got Bo and Barkley who have not been able to wear officially licensed Auburn gear because it's got the Under Armour logo because they're lifetime Nike athletes and Frank Thomas, I'm sure, as well. So, you know, you've got stuff like that. You've got um, Tim Cook, who is on the board of directors for Nike and has has always wanted to, you know, connect his love of Auburn and his passion with Nike. Um, you've got cleats. Cleats are a huge deal, especially for these athletes. And I've heard more than my fair share of stories about Auburn athletes getting injured wearing Under Armour cleats. And, you know, there, it's another rabbit hole we could dive into later. But, um, you know, when you're competing at this level, you need to be confident in what you're wearing and you need to be confident in your cleats. And you, you really get the sense that athletes were not confident in, in what they were wearing when it had the Under Armour logo on their feet. And even yesterday when the announcement got made, there were a ton of football players coming out of the woodshed talking bad about the Under Armour cleats specifically and, and that stuff happens all the time. I'm not, you know, take all that kind of stuff with grain of salt for sure. But uh, it, it's, it's a little telling when, you know, I, I've heard coaches at Auburn are not fond of the Under Armour cleats and, and it, it's, it's just what it is at this point, you know, Under Armour was not in the shoe business when, when Auburn signed with them in 2005. And so, again, you're competing with a company who had a 30-year head start in the footwear business, and Under Armour was struggling to keep up with it and mm -hmm. to innovate and to, you know, make Steph Curry look good in all white Under Armour shoes. And, and you know, it's just a, such a different – if you're not a sneakerhead, and I am not, it's hard to understand that community. Yeah. And there was such a stigma against Under Armour shoes that they're ugly, that they're bad, that they're uncomfortable, that they're poor quality. And 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 again, that's that's the 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 persona that Under Armour had to carry for a long time. You know, even the stats, the the like the business insider stats are that Under Armour was most popular with, you know, kids between the age of six and nine or six and 12 or something like that. And once they got out of that, it, it, it changed immediately. You know, once you hit high school, you don't care about Under Armour, according to those stats. Mm -hmm. And, and that's such a hard thing to, to fight in, in such a brand loyal 
community and industry that America is, honestly. Yeah. Yep. So we know, as we've been discussing, why the change was made in general, but to Nike versus Under Armour. <laughs> Let me ask you this. Why Nike and not Adidas? Why Nike and not Air Jordan? Why? It, I know that's you can go on for hours on that, but if you had to like pinpoint it down, what's the thing that set Nike apart from the other companies if we're going to make a change regardless? I think there's kind of two things, two two big aspects of that. Number one is Charles Barkley and Bo Jackson. They rumors, you know, the word has been that they have been pushing for this for a long time. Um, Chuck has said as much on TV that he wants his team wearing Nike. So it's hard to go against what those two guys say. <laughs> uh, and number two, I just, if, if you take a step back and kind of read what Auburn is, what Nike is, what Adidas is like Auburn just doesn't fit Adidas very well. Mm -hmm. You know, if you were told to just compare all of these, it's Auburn and Nike or Auburn and Under Armour. And, and unfortunately Adidas is just a distant third and just that, that comparison game yeah um, you know it's just it, it, when you think auburn you don't think adidas i i would agree with that and that's when we were having these conversations even a year past or in the in the past i often had that problem of trying to visualize that adidas mm -hmm. logo and it's not that it <clears throat> wouldn't work it just didn't feel right. And part of that is because I was so much associated with the Under Armour thing there. Yeah. As maybe a clarifying question, let me propose this to you. Do you think if it was only between Under Armour and Adidas, the switch still would have been made? Yeah, probably. Okay. I, I felt like you would say that, but I just want to make sure, you know, because when you say it's a distant third uh, in that. I mean, race, I mean that, that was that was just the mental yeah. uh, comparing game. Yeah. But if you look at it through a different light, like a lot of the, the decision makers at Auburn seemingly wanted a new option. They were yep. sick and tired of what they were dealing with and, you know, fighting an uphill battle with injuries and, and recruiting, if you think that's an issue. Um, and either Nike or Adidas are going to be helpful. And that's in all of those senses. Adidas, again, is a, you know, decades old shoe company that that knows how to build cleats and, and has you know higher you know i don't know higher tier athletes that they work with than yeah. under armor does you know yeah. under armor has the tom brady's and the steph curry's but you know nike and adidas have a dozen of each of those at each position at each sport so yeah. it, it's it's just hard, you know, the, I, I, I don't know the scale of these companies right? to share it like this, but I think when you just look at the scale, you've got Nike who 50 years old, you know, so much money with what they've got, you know, Phil Knight has a ton of money, the number of athletes that they work with, the number of schools that wear their logo. And then you look at Under Armour and you see, 20 athletes total yeah and tom brady's retiring mm -hmm. and steph curry and the golden state warriors are not the dominant factor that they were 10 years ago you know it's it, it, it's night and day between the two yeah in in that vein and and i want us to start moving into maybe talking about what might we know or what don't we know? Like just having some fun with what the future could be at this point. But I want to ask you this. You you brought up the topic of athletes being associated with the brand. I think you're right. Charles and Bo obviously had a clear <laughs> influence on this and, and many others as well. What do we do about Cam? I mean, I know Cam's not playing anymore and he was like the poster child for the college athlete coming out with Under Armour. Yep. What, what about our boy Cam? I that's a hard one. <laughs> we just hey, we just said peace out, Cam. Good luck with that. You know? I, I mean, here, here, <laughs> you tell me if you had to choose between Cam Newton at one table or Bo yep. and Barkley at yep. another table, I, yep. I'm going to the two to that table. Yeah, you know, I if Cam's a casualty of this move, so be it. I'm sorry. Well, I mean. 
it, it's funny you said that when we did our just opening reaction stream to this breaking news the other day i proposed that exact same thing i don't you must have been i don't know ears burning because we, we were thinking on the same wavelength here i proposed the get the three big figureheads of auburn football right now at a table who are you going to listen to you think everybody's going to listen to cam over Bo and charles like that's just not happening yeah so uh love you cam sorry but uh hopefully and, and, you can help and, and you know to to go down that a little further like i don't know how much weight cam has with under armor at this point you know yes and, and as as Auburn Elvis just mentioned like i'm not worried about cam not being able to wear auburn apparel when he's on campus i don't know the last time we've seen all cam newton in an auburn shirt <laughs> when he's on campus He's so, on campus, just not. He's just in something all together, you know. So like I, I'm not, <laughs> you know, I'm more upset about watching, you know, Charles Barkley having to spend time and energy wasting taping over the Under Armour logo on his shirt when he's trying to wear a Pat Sullivan shirt jersey. Like, mm -hmm. it's stupid. It's yeah. nuts. And, and and now we don't have to play that game anymore. Uh, I think we were talking about, so I don't know if he missed this, but will Cam still be able to wear Under Armour Auburn jerseys in public after the con? I think he can do whatever he wants. Uh, like he's, sure. yeah, I mean, he's, he's not bound to, and again, there's how much is he associated with Under Armour anymore? Not being an active athlete. Yeah. Um, so that, that's just the question those, for those kind of questions. I know are a lot of fun to think about, but the answer is always going to be, it boils down to what their contract stipulates. Mm -hmm. And I don't have access to that. Yeah, we we're not blessed with, you know, uh, being able to look inside every single thing that we want to, but we're just making good estimations at this point. So I think we've hit the high points of the facts of this, what we do know, what we think we know, and, and, and let's have some fun. And this is a good time for you if you are a viewer. Uh, to get some questions, comments, and topics in that you want to hit. We'll hit some that maybe we haven't addressed yet that have already been put in our chat. But I want to uh, move into that type of space here for the rest of our time. I just Let's bounced around to a bunch of different things. Um, do you, should I just bring the, the one that's most recent in there right now? Do it. <laughs> Whatever you need. You knew the next thing after, are we getting Nike? Can we have the orange football jerseys, Clint? So right now, I want breaking news from you. Auburn is getting orange jerseys. No. <laughs> <laughs> I I have gotten this question many many times since yesterday and this is the important part to remember about this the logo on the shirt is changing the decision makers at Auburn are not changing good point the roadblocks that have been in place for the last 20 30 40 years are still in place it is always up to the team to have final say on what is worn on the field. I say always, there's always a caveat as well. You know, we can go back to, gosh, was it 2015? Under Armour required Auburn baseball to wear two really bad looking uniforms. I've got one in the closet back there actually. Um, and they stated that it was required by the contract. I looked in the contract. I could not find any language that mm -hmm. required that, but there are some off instances where those things happen, but 95% of the time, it is the team's final say on what is worn. So everybody who's worried about the uniform, the football uniform specifically, getting a big overhaul, going an, an Oregon approach, it's not going to happen. Auburn still has to approve whatever this team wears. So do you think they would go ahead and make something that to make a big splash though. Like, is, is there a possibility? I know anything's a possibility. So that's, that's almost a stupid question, but like, d does there need to be a splash made with this? Like something, an alternate uniform that they could go to, whether it's orange or not, w what's your feeling that? So the, the, the way that I think about it is sure. Nike can spend some time, you know, pitching Auburn on a new design. Uh, Under Armour did the exact same thing. And maybe the Nike pitch is better. Maybe it's a better design. Maybe it's more convincing salesman, whatever it is. It still has to be pitched to the Auburn decision makers. You mm -hmm. know, if the coaches like it, it's got to go up that rank. 
I mean, even just getting the face mask colors a couple of years ago had to go through multiple hoops. Mm -hmm. It was not just, let's do this, you know, as much as people want to think it is, there's, there's a chain of command at Auburn. And I know that there are other things that other people with the university want to change, but they can't Yeah, because of, of this is how we've done things. And the people who believe that are the ones who are in charge of that. So there's, there's a process. And if Nike's just better at it, then they're better at it. Right. And if we see an orange Jersey next year, it's because they were just better at it. Mm. Let's be completely honest. Like, you know, you might get a booster or a decision maker, whatever you want to call them, like that kind of views this opportunity as the best opportunity to do something different. Sure. But there, this is why you have multiple people in charge, not just one decision maker. So yeah, Nike has a, a tough task ahead of them if they're looking to do just that. And that might be part of the negotiations with the contract. Yeah. We don't know. Yep. Don't have a clue what it says. Well, how about this? Uh, I think he's asked this a couple of different times. Um, are we supposed to get a new Jersey template this year? When I'm, I'm assuming he means when the, the first deal arrives for 20, 2025. No, when we're getting the yeah. Under Armour. So yeah. typically those football jerseys kind of rotate templates every four to five years, which puts us about right there. Uh, under Armour doesn't really have a new premiere. Nope, we lost Clint for just a little heck? bit. That's all right. I don't know what's going on there, can you but hear we, me. We what can hear world? you, but you turn blue. <laughs> what is going on? Oh man! <laughs> Holy crap. hey, Under Armour heard we were talking about this and decided that they were going to hijack our stream for a little bit. Are you still with me, Clint? <laughs> I'm here, but holy cow! Yeah, don't know what's going on there, but. If you want to take a beat to figure that out, I can certainly. This <laughs> I is... love what Amanyama said. Rave in Clint's house. <laughs> this is dumb. What is going on? Uh, do you want me to give you a minute to figure it out on your end and bring you back on, or you want uh, to work through it? Hold on. Let's see. Um, what was I saying? <laughs> we, we were talking about we were talking about uh, the New Jersey templates for this year, the next year when's it going to happen if it's going to happen all that stuff um i know that's been something that's been asked a lot i know don't you love in the rave that's happening right <laughs> this now? is ridiculous i have what is happening at least it's not a static shot it keeps changing back and forth to something else that's all i gotta say about it <laughs> I... do you think you need to replug it back in i just did here's the backup camera so... oh there we go okay yeah, yeah. it's not gonna work for long but Hey, but we got an interesting shot of your chin now. Let's not do multiple chins. I was about to say, we'll make it, uh, make it a little awkward here. It wouldn't be an E2C <laughs> Network's live stream if we didn't have technical problems. Oh, my gosh. So, but I, I can say what was going on. I can say for the first time, it's not me, though. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so back to the templates. Yeah. Um, Under Armour does not have a new Premiere template out right now. You, you saw it a little bit in the last two years where they've got the... Um, the the Under Armour logo right in the middle of the chest, similar to what we're seeing with the, um, good lord, <laughs> so stupid guys. <laughs> All right, the logo uh, stays up apparently. That's fine. We'll go with it. Go ahead, Clint. <sighs> finish your thoughts on that. But you know, Under Armour does not have a new premiere template out right now and i think it's going to stay like that um i don't think we're going to see anything new this year i think you're going to see for the last year of everything that is going to be happening is just sticking with the status quo mm -hmm. there's no need to to purchase new uniforms unless um unless they're required to who yeah. knows you know there's you know, there's always, yay, we're back. Hey, God, that was dumb. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Dustbusters fault. I uh, know. I was hoping, oh, it's back. It's gone again. Uh, <laughs> I'm so mad. I know. This has been, and listen, okay. it's not like you've been busy or anything like that. It's not what I needed today, guys. But no, no, I don't think you're going to see anything new. All year. that to say, no. <laughs> 
for those of you that don't know the tale of the dustbuster you have missed quite a time mm-hmm. here at e2c network it's, and it's the ghost of the dustbuster is it not it, it, it is it is one of those this is why you need to jump on board and be part of this little family in the auburn family because then you'll get these jokes like this it's, it's neither appropriate nor uh time, <laughs> time uh <laughs> relevant to us right now uh, okay, I had a couple of other things in here. Um, I'm going to keep looking back in our chat, but keep the comments and questions coming that you want uh, Clint to address. I wonder what the new team shoe will be like. Any thoughts on shoes? I am I am so happy to finally be a part of the annual Pegasus running shoe release. So I don't have to <laughs> I don't have to be the the SpongeBob sitting alone at the cafe meme anymore. So um, you, you know, every year Nike releases a running shoe a tennis shoe that is um customizable to each school's colorway they do it for just about every single college team and every single nfl team that they use so it's it's a big deal and we get to be part of that next year so so is this like one of those things for this what do you call them the sneaker heads or something like that they get real jazzed up see that's that's a world i'm not privy to. honestly no this won't this won't really affect a lot of the sneaker heads this is going to be the casual fan is okay. really going to be really upset about these these are you know if you remember every year under armor the last couple of years under armor has released tennis shoes that have the auburn logo on the tongue mm-hmm. uh you're that's kind of what we're going to be doing but with a better sneaker silhouette i guess Se- sneaker, sneaker silhouette head. well okay i mean but you but you're as close as a sneaker head as some of us are going to get to today like you're at least somewhat versed in that vernacular uh so are we're talking a release of like just the different usage of our colors within the design of the shoe every single year correct okay and there'd yeah. be like a new edition every year hmm well yeah. then my but well it's just about to get a little bit lighter apparently <laughs> yep which I'm excited is excited to have that affiliate link. Let's go. Oh, there. I, I was like, you're gonna work that in there somehow. But you know, listen, this <laughs> hey, is I what... applied for the Nike affiliate program today. So man, th- what a day for Clint Richardson. It's I mean, busy. it has been busy and plenty of things. So that a little quick thoughts on shoes, at least. Um, what we can be I think there is what's gonna be funny now is to see the different factions, not just of I, I don't I want Under Armour, I want Nike, but now we're gonna have the jersey people, the shoe people. Are there sock people out there? I don't know. I mean, is that a thing? Uh, No, I don't think you're going to see anything there. Um, Okay. I'm not sure I understand this question, but I'm going to bring it up. Um, Do you think the Auburn uniform blueprint will be the same as Georgia and Alabama? Would the stripes be a thing that could be added on? I guess we're talking tiger stripes. Is that similar to – does Georgia do the dog collar? They did it on one alternate that isn't worn anymore. So – I'm um, assuming that's what Cynthia's asking. Is yeah, type. Cynthia, I'm not entirely sure exactly what you're asking, but um, just re- be rest assured that the Auburn football jersey design is going to remain the same. It's just mm-hmm. going to be put on a new chassis, effectively. Just like we've seen the Under Armour template change a couple of times, we're going to be moving over to a new Nike chassis, new template um, that allows for a couple of different things if Auburn wants to go that route, but um that's that's about it you're you're still gonna see you're still gonna see the same design nothing wow changing there. we're bringing in like vernacular from somewhere at, like auto world now here in the <laughs> it's going here. places i will never you, thought we would will you hit matt austin's question about the the nike visors nike visors matt austin i got it will auburn be required to wear nike visors in the helmets or will players be able to wear the shock visors as Clint reaches down? All right. So, into, oh, look at there. These are there. the Under Armour visors. They have a much more squared approach on the top tabs. These are the quick release visor uh, clips. The Under Armour visor, regardless of what you think about Under Armour as an apparel brand, the visors have consistently been considered the top and best visor, there especially those clips. The Nike, and I'm going to show off my Jaguars helmet. Uh, the Nike tabs are much bigger, much rounded, and these are actually Under Armour clips. So I don't have Nike clips, but um, whereas these can be screwed on and off by hand, they've got a big thumb screw in the back. The Nike clips 
literally hook over the bar on the face mask and have to be screwed in with a screwdriver so they are not quickly released um no auburn will not will likely not be required to stick with just nike uh visors nike okay. visors are typically considered not great uh the shock visors that matt mentioned are uh designed specifically to fit the night or the Riddell speed flats helmet so that there it's the shock zero g so it's zero gap around the visor and the helmet so that it's a perfect fill of your field of vision and we saw a couple of players wearing that this weekend at 8a and i think that will be the visor of choice moving forward so there you go folks don't say clint ever said didn't say anything nice about under armor the <laughs> visors top notch so there you go so we're taking a downgrade in the visors but i, I think in the grand scheme of things we'll take if that's if that's the best we can come up in reality that's not the best that we can come up with what under armor gave versus the other ones but you know the reality is when you look at the whole picture um it, nike's gonna win out even if and visors yeah. <laughs> under armor wins of the game. Good question. Good question. That's not one area. I, I, I guess for me, it is part of the uniform, but I think shoes, short yeah. or pants, shirts, helmets for football. And, and that's, that's where I stopped thinking at, but you got to think about things like that for foot, for football visors and yep. um, shin guards for, I don't know, for uh, football. I mean, for, well, I guess that is football, football. for soccer. <laughs> football. <laughs> Uh, Matt also had this question. Will we see Jordan shoes involved? I'm assuming a hundred percent. We get Bo and Barkley shoes. I do think we might see a re-release of the Bo Jordan. I don't, I, again, I'm not the sneaker head, but uh, 2013, I think they released an orange and blue colorway of a very specific Jordan uh, type of shoe. Um, I think we'll see something like that come back uh, just as a limited run or something, just to celebrate the hype. Um, as far as Jordan shoes specifically, I think you might see some Jordan related merch or, you know, for, for purchase in the stores or more, more likely for the players to wear even off the court or on the court, um, that might happen. It's, it's going to be limited if it does, but that's all going to be stipulated in the contract. And once we get a copy of that, I'll be breaking it down in full detail. So we'll, we'll dive into it together. What's the timeline do you think on that, on that? Uh... <clears throat> no idea. Okay. <laughs> Cause now you got me intrigued too, that I want to know a little bit about it too. Uh, I like that we have options when we will have, I like the options we will have at buying jerseys, the fuse vapor and default, and maybe Mitchell and Ness. Those are words I do not know. So Mitchell and Ness is a completely separate company and they do a lot of vintage items. Um, I don't know if they even have an Auburn license to begin with. So hmm. that is it's completely unrelated to this situation. Hmm. The, the, the vapor fuse that, uh, unbeaten lake is mentioning is the new football template that will be worn next you know 2025 um and it, it's it's just the new template we'll dive into all those <laughs> details again but um you know there there are multiple levels of um jersey quality that nike offers mm -hmm. you know from like 100 bucks to 350 bucks which is like almost authentic same thing that the players wear um as far as you know the normal casual fan is a uh, concern you've got like a hundred 125 and 150 dollar level now the biggest problem with this new vapor fuse retail jersey is they are no longer stitched tackle twill numbers they are all heat pressed and screen printed and you are paying more money for the lesser quality jersey at this point that's mm. a big big bummer and i hate that and i hope that nike and under armor and everybody involved gets on it because we cannot have third party you know bootleg knockoff jerseys that are at a higher quality are more accurate and a better price point so mm -hmm. I think you're going to see some real disruption in that industry in the next couple of years. And I hope and pray 
that that these that the big three get this right because it's about freaking time. You still consider Under Armour part of the big three, huh? I do. No, just because you lose Auburn. I mean, most people when they lose Auburn, they they fall out of grace with everybody. But that's <laughs> just just being part of uh, the Auburn uh, branding. There, this is a good question that I want to address and i think it's a little obvious yes will the stadium change like where the under armor logo and said protect this house yes. let me add to that clint i think it's an obvious yes you can't just leave a logo up there but is there anywhere else that we're not thinking of and that i know you probably might have thought of where we will see under armor removed from that was kind of obvious i think it's going to be a lot more of the you know, it's going to be kind of that thing of, oh, I didn't realize that was here situation, mm -hmm. even for me who pays attention to this. Um, it's not going to be as front and center as like all the AUs on campus, like when Stephen Leith tried to change it in 2019. Don't go and down that rabbit hole. Don't get want to fight up. me on that one. Um, <laughs> you know, it's not on the court, but it's going to be on all those little signs. So, you know, you've got the banner over the tunnel in the football stadium. You also have a big square on the Jumbotron. You've got, you know, just signage everywhere has to be changed. And according to the contract has to be changed out 180 days after the conclusion of the contract. Hmm. So it's so quite it's, a bit of time. Yeah. I don't it think it's going to take that long, but that's there legally as the, I'm not a lawyer. I don't know what I'm reading because this is very legalese in these contracts. Um, Auburn has no right to display an Under Armour logo after 180 days hmm. come june july 1st 2025 i would imagine with them wanting to make a big <laughs> celebration of sorts which you anticipate when this yeah. goes live that it will be a very quick process and i mean I do the general fan won't see the stadium. Obviously none of us truly will, unless you somehow have access to the stadium until opening kickoff of yep. that year. So you'll leave one season. It'll be protect this house. The next it'll probably be a Nike swoosh. Yeah. Can, you're, can I, you're not going to notice it. Can I, can I just be honest? If there is one thing I'm sad is that it will not say protect this house anymore. Let, let just give them credit. That was a cool slogan. It was great. It was and, such a good one. And that that piggybacking off of uh, Click Clack was just how Under Armour built up their brand, you know, in the early 2000s. And that's just where it fell. It was a good start, though. But you will have name recognition <laughs> associated with having Nike swoosh everywhere. And let me, I got to find the comment for it. I'll find one that associated with it. But I think you know where I'm going here. I want you to give maybe your take and we've talked about it before about recruiting and i know you don't follow recruiting a whole lot but just what do you think is truly going to be the impact of this in recruiting do you think it is coach uh hugh free said last week in a press conference he doesn't think it makes that big of a difference what's your take so i for, forgive me kyle but yesterday i did a, a show with another uh, I did an interview with another show. That's it. And get him off. Get him off <laughs> Sorry. now. <laughs> Sorry. And, and and I was speaking with Justin Hokinson on his show, and he is obviously much more ingrained in the recruiting world than I am. So I, I defer to their expertise in the sense. Um, and, and per Justin, it's not going to be a huge deal when it comes to football because of just so. You know, if you kind of step back and, and look at the past 15, 20 years, Nike and Adidas both had deep pockets and deep connections with the AAU basketball world. Mm -hmm. And and this is this is the, the train of thought that a lot of people take with this, that, um, you know, Nike would sign an AAU team and sign those players. And, and that AAU coach and Nike would both funnel those players to be recruited and, and commit to Nike branded schools. And then after they graduate, they're going to be signed as a Nike athlete, all that kind of stuff. So yeah. it was, it was almost a, a coach in waiting, a contract in waiting kind of situation. So, you know, as Justin said it much better yesterday on his show yeah. that um, with NIL and with the portal as it is today, that, those ties have kind of been diminished yep. by a lot. 
So it is it going to hurt? No. Is it going to help? It might. But I, I still stand by what I said for many years. If a player, if a recruit comes to your school and his biggest concern is the uniforms, he's probably not the right player for you. Amen. Amen. When you when you've got a kid, an 18, 19 year old kid who is coming to your campus and looking to spend at most four to six years at your school, the last thing he should be worried about is the uniforms. He should be worried about the coaching staff, the facilities, the the atmosphere around the area, how well that program can get him to the next level. And, and you know, honestly, he should be more concerned. He and his parents should be more concerned about, you know, what degree options are available. Yeah. What are the professors like? What's the cost of tuition? Like when you just look at all of those things that are probably discussed in these meetings, the uniform should not be in the top 20. Yeah. And, and I get that for some players it is, but that's such a, a, a fleeting thing. Yeah, you know, especially when you're at a school like Oregon, who changes every year. What if mm-hmm. you don't like the uniform? Yeah. You know, yes, you get to go home with a lot more gear than anybody else, and that's important to you, sure. You know, but it, it's when people try to put such a a blanket statement over it that this is going to help. I I, I just don't see it. I, I have to oh, question yeah. that logic. I don't either. It, it's one of those things that, uh, as I talk about a lot on everything we do, that gets perpetuated on message boards and social media. Somebody said something. I heard my uncle say this was mm-hmm. that recruit said no because of this, and then the recruiting junkies perpetuate it. So, it, does it? I like the way you have always phrased it. Does it hurt? No. Does it help? Maybe, but it's not the biggest, the biggest thing in the world. It, and frankly, that was probably the least part of the decision making process in all of this yeah we are getting towards the end here and we want to at least bring up what you have displayed there really quick so last minute you don't want to bring that up or you do i forgot about it (laughs) (laughs) well we'll just bring it up so people can see the the new logo on there in just a second but get your last minute comments and questions with final reminders here for you before we kind of round out our show with clint uh, we do have our regular call-in show happening right after this. It will be a separate stream. We hope that you can join us right after this. Technically, it starts at 8, probably be a little late starting. But hop on over there. You can call in. We can continue the conversation. Anybody is fair game and uh, to join over there and talk about anything and everything. Auburn, make sure you're subscribing. And Clint, why don't you use this time real quick to go ahead and plug stuff that you want to plug about how people can support you, get more information from you, Ooh. all that good stuff. Oh, man, it's been a busy, busy two days. So um, as always, check out everything the Auburn Uniform Database has to offer at auburnuniforms.com. We've got over 340 combined seasons of Auburn Athletic uniforms displayed, including a complete history of Auburn uniforms across the sports that are tracked. Um Follow me on social media at ClintAU24 on Twitter and at Auburn Uniforms everywhere else for so much more information than what goes on the website. Um, if you enjoy, <laughs> I'm forgetting where I am, Kyle. It's been a long day. Um, if you enjoy the work that I do and want to support it, you can visit uh, my website and and click on the Buy Me a Coffee link. It's think about Patreon, but more a la carte one time. Um, purchase kind of thing, or you can become a member and financially support what I do. Love it. Make sure you guys support Clint. He does a lot more than just uniform stuff. It's all about history, Auburn aesthetics. His work is very much valued and we need to support him when we can. All right, let me bring this up on screen. Nothing uh, really super, I mean, it's exciting in the sense, how, how did I do this? Last how time? did you do this, Kyle? How did I do this? Look <laughs> at all this switching around and stuff. Let's look at it's just, how did I do this last time? There we go. There we go. Hey, all hit right. The right so button that, this time. That hit the right button. Hey, at least my camera works. Oh, hey. Oh. Hey, um, Elvis, Elvis had a great uh, he comment. He did. He um, did. Unfortunately, that one was on my phone, and my phone overheated and shut down halfway through. So, oh, no, it didn't. God, that's <laughs> so, you've just been having so much bad luck lately. Uh, anyway, all right. Um, Get your comments, questions, topic in real quick. Clint, uh, we've been asking a lot 
of topics and questions directed at you, but is there anything that we haven't touched on in this whole conversation of what you need to know about Auburn and Nike yet that you feel like we need to, if you had, we can just go to questions. Uh, if you no, feel I like- can't think of anything right now. If there's the, the article on auburnuniforms.com is about 2000 words. So dive really deep into what, what to expect, especially uniform wise. Um, if you've been keeping up with the Major League Baseball uniform fiasco, like hit on that. Are we going to expect that at Auburn as well? So um, there's going to be a lot more information to break down over the next 16 months. And uh, the content brain is already running about how we're going to break that down. <laughs> you know what's funny? You know what's funny? I was thinking before we started this. Man, I mean, this is a Super Bowl, and it's just downhill from here. No, this is just beginning for you. <laughs> yes, yes, and, and it's funny because this is like my third Super Bowl, according to everybody else. I had the Super Bowl when the logo change yep. was announced. I had a Super Bowl when the the orange face mask returned with the it, white face mask were made. So it, it has been a a good ten years on the Auburn uniform database, tenth uh, anniversary this year, and and celebratory merch also available. Wait, 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 wait! I just figured it out. You're in cahoots. You you figured out how to make this happen during your ten year anniversary. <laughs> Don't play, sir. Like no. you didn't work with the university on your 10 year anniversary to get the Nike deal done. Don't Bloody you dare outrage. deny it. I, I, I will deny it because it ain't true. <laughs> I, it's all coming to light now. Now we figured out what's going on behind. Clint is more involved than y'all think, folks. <laughs> all right. Well, because we've been talking a lot about this nike vapor fuse template let's let's dive into this just real quick okay. so this is the new jersey um that you will very likely see next season um the biggest feature there's two big features that anybody who pays attention at all is going to notice the first one is this giant mesh cow catcher grill as they call it on the collar um it's a, it's it's much more tone on tone but it's still very visible when you see it on a player. Um, Typically this will house a logo. Uh, So I think we might see the Auburn logo return here for the first time since 2005, 2004. Uh, These areas, these logos are much larger than the buttons that were worn back then. So this this might return. Uh, This big V-shaped seam that runs just below the collar to the shoulders This is the worst part about this entire thing. (laughs) Um, So you can really see this if you look at like a Texas uniform right now, because Texas has a giant word mark between the collar and the numbers. And because of this seam, it pushes everything further down. So if Auburn wants to stick to the Auburn chest mark that they've worn for the last 20 plus years, it's going to go below this seam and it's going to push this number down, and it's not going to look great if they do that. So I hope they stick with the the logo on the collar, but you've got, you know, um, I don't know how well this is picking up on the screen, but all these little mesh points on parts of the jersey, these are laser perforated holes. So these are not, it's not mesh. It's it's cut through this material. Hmm. Um, These, you know, one thing that you should be prepared for when it comes to Nike is a lot of bull crap marketing speak. And I say that as somebody who works in marketing, they are going to try to tell you that every inch of every ounce of every item that they produce is manufactured and studied. And, and it might be, but it's not going to make you 15% faster. Like they claim it will be. Mm. And a lot, everybody does this, not just Nike, but Nike is just the king of this. So, <laughs> It can't make you 15% faster if they spend the time, that 15% telling you about it. So, I mean. But you can spend 15% on car insurance. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> how, did, how did that happen? <laughs> that happened because you went there. So did. that's did. kind of, those are kind of the big things. Nike also really loves these inner collar slogans or details. So, yep. um, you, you know, typically it's, you know, win the day or, 
you know, whatever the slogan of the coaches that season. So you might see War Damn Eagle, you might see Be the Creed, you might see I Believe in Work, Hard Work, or anything like that. So Ooh. those are details that they love to push. And it's really hard to get excited about it because you're never going to see it. Hey, I'll get excited about they put Be the Creed on it right now. I'm just telling you. I mean, I agree. <laughs> I had a, I had a previous mock up <laughs> years ago that had work, hard work on the collar. That's a good one. Um, but I needed something a little bit more simple just to get the point across. Sound mind, sound body, you know, all that. <laughs> There's a lot you can pull from the Creed or, you know, it, it could be Auburn fast if it's a Gus oh, situation. Man, now we're going back to days. <laughs> good to great if it's Chizik. So there's all sorts of stuff that can happen. But Lots of marketing to be had yep. by, by Nike. 1-0 mentality. 1-0 yep. mentality. <laughs> but yeah, this is what you're going to get. And expect a lot of this kind of stuff across all the sports. Um, awesome. Yeah. It's, awesome. It's just very detailed. <laughs> Well, buddy, I know we're not done talking about this. Uh, oh there will be many more days, many more conversations, many more opportunities to continue to talk about um, what has been a saga and a time that I know that you've been waiting for for quite some time. So we I appreciate am just glad that it is finally announced and it's over. But now you're going to get a new set of questions that are going to be repeatedly asked you over and over again. So just get y ready. Yes, it's just the vitriol that was surrounding the under armor versus nike who's good who's bad who's evil who's godson it was just so annoying and well it'll still continue it. i hate to break it to you but <laughs> <laughs> anybody want to moderate my facebook comments for me uh no because i have to moderate mine. <laughs> um anyway thank you so much clint for joining us to give us the in-depth look at what you need to know auburn and nike the future is at hand we will enjoy one final year with under armor and then move into the future and, Thanks for hanging out with us. And bag up all those discounted Under Armour items. Hey, man, I'm all for it right now. Absolutely. That's all we've got for you today. Thanks for tuning in. Until we talk to you again, War Eagle. War Eagle.